just been working on Berkman's book now and then, and just AK Press have just republished it. What is anarchism? Reading his letters in the twenties when he's he's working on the book and he's finding it very difficult. One of the things that he's trying to come to grips with, I think, in the book is well, why haven't people come to this idea? This idea, which to me is just common sense, is is just a what we were saying earlier, this natural instinct almost to solidarity and support. And I've seen Russia, I've seen totalitarianism in action. Why haven't anarchist ideas had a greater impact in the world? I think he's talking about. Now that's 80 years ago nearly. And, and, and the question we're all still facing as people uh, at least believe, what is it, Emma Goldman says, anarchism is the only belief that shows man, men and women their true self, who they can be. We, we see that, we know that instinctively, yet it's still had such a minuscule impact. Is that true or is it? Well, I don't think it's true that it's had right. a minuscule impact. Right. I mean, a lot of the progressive social change of uh, the past century, uh, you know, isn't anarchist. Like right. a progressive taxation is an anarchist. Social security is an anarchist. But it's a reflection of attitudes and understanding, which if they go a little bit further, do reflect anarchist commitments. And they do, they are based on the idea that uh, there really should be solidarity, sympathy, community, mutual support, mutual aid, and so on and so forth, and uh, opportunities for creative action. And they're all based on these. They don't, you know, they're subdued and channeled and modified, so they don't take real libertarian forms. But they're there, and they lead to social change. Uh, why hasn't it gone further? Well, a large part of it is violence. Uh, so take, say, Bergman's uh, experience in Russia. You know, he, he entered into a violent totalitarian state. Mm. I mean, up until the uh, Bolshevik takeover, the coup revolution, whatever you want to call it, uh, up until that, uh, there were uh, very significant uh, popular uh, libertarian, sometimes anarchist initiatives all over, you know, running from you know, peasant anarchism in the Ukraine to uh, uh, workers' councils, the Soviets, and so on and so forth. Well, they were simply smashed by force, yeah. uh, by great violence. I mean, Lenin and Trotsky were totalitarian extremists, yeah. and they had a theory behind it. Um, they were kind of dedicated Marxists who believed that uh, backward primitive country like Russia can't go to socialism. The master's principles tell us that. Uh, and uh, uh, therefore we have to drive it, drive the country by force uh, through the stages of essentially state capitalist development and then ultimately something will happen. I mean, they weren't repeating the master accurately. This required suppression of many years of Marx's later work, which were literally suppressed when he was studying the peasant societies in Russia and so on and so forth. But that doesn't really matter. I mean, the point is they had a conception, they used it, they had the force. It, was, it, was, it wasn't easy, like, you know, to destroy uh, Machno's movement or Kronstadt or to eliminate the Soviets and so on. It wasn't a trivial operation, but it was carried out. And Berkman saw it, and he saw a totalitarian, vicious totalitarian society arising very much the way anarchists had predicted. Yes. I mean, Bakunin yes. spelled it all out. Yes. In fact, even Trotsky in his yes. early yes. work before he joined it said what was going to happen, as did Rosa Luxemburg and others. Uh, but it happened. So, th And that's their variant. Our variant was different. Uh, Wilson, uh, Berkman was writing right after Wilson's Red Scare, uh, which uh, made the Patriot Act looked like a Tea Party. It was a violent repression run by the progressives, Woodrow Wilson and others, mm -hmm. and not just affecting, you know, anarchists, not just Emma Goldman who was kicked out, but you know, even people pretty much in the mainstream, yes. like Eugene Debs, yeah. you know, yeah. leading labor yeah. figure. Yeah. He, I mean, Wilson was completely vindictive. You know, tossed him to the jail because he. Uh, raised some questions about the nobility of Wilson's war and uh, refused even to grant him an amnesty when everyone else was granted an amnesty. This was real vindictive. And it, it really uh, crushed independent thought, crushed labor, uh, had a big effect. Uh, so it was violence. 
alongside the violence, there is uh, the rise of um, massive propaganda. Mm. Uh, that's the rise of the public relations yes. industry yes. to try to control attitudes and beliefs. Yeah. Uh, but quite apart from that, there's something quite simple. I mean, there are disciplinary effects to the way life is organized. Uh, take, say, students today. Students today have many, are, are more in some ways, I mean, in a lot of ways, they're freer than they were 60 years ago, their attitudes and commitments and so on. On the other hand, they're more disciplined. Yes. They're disciplined by yes. debt. Yes, yes. That's part of the reason yes. for arranging education so you come out with a heavy debt is so you're disciplined. Or um, now let's take the last 20 years, the neoliberal years, roughly, uh, what's called globalization, but neoliberalism. Uh, a lot of it is, a, a very striking part of it is just aimed at discipline. Mm. Uh, it wants to eliminate freedom of choice and impose discipline. How do you do it? Yeah. Well, you know, you, if you have a couple in the United States now uh, working, you know, each 50, each of them 50 hours a week to put food on the table, you don't have time to think about no. how to become a libertarian social. No, what no, you're worried about is, is how do I get food yeah. on the table? Where can I shop no. cheaply? And, yeah. yeah, I mean, I got a kid, a kids to take yeah. care of, and I got something to do with them. You know, when they're sick, I've got to go to work, and what's going to happen to them? Yeah. You know, uh, the and that's very, uh, that's well designed techniques of imposing discipline, and there are costs to trying to be independent. I mean, it just takes, say, trying to organize a labor union. I mean, if you're the organizer, there's going to be a cost to you. I mean, maybe the workforce will gain, but there's a cost to you. Uh, we know there is. Yes. Uh, we know what the cost is, not yes. just in energy and effort, but just in punishment. Yes. And the people who are living in fragile circumstances have, and they make a reasonable calculation. They say, why well, should I take the cost? I've got to get by. Uh, so there are many reasons why normal uh, instincts and attitudes don't come out, but mm. you know, over time they often do. That's oh, why so we have social change yes. for the better.